Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to... Oh, I hope that wasn't important. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> hello, everyone. How many people here are familiar with the voice of Free Planet X? Oh, great. I don't have to explain anything. You guys have it. Uh, just in case you aren't. Essentially, the Voice of Free Plan X is a fake interview show. So I uh, will be interviewing people, usually, on the feed. I have something similar to that tonight. Um, and uh, you guys are all familiar with it, so I don't even go to. I just want to say, hello, welcome. This is exciting. I'm excited. Welcome to the Voice of Free Planet X at the Philadelphia Podcast Festival. This is Jared Axelrod. And welcome to the live show here at Tattooed Mom. We are very excited to be here at Tattooed Mom. Very excited. Uh, Partly because it's an amazing space, as I think you can see, Um, but also because it is on top of an alif. There's an alif down in the basement. Um, now, an alif, for those of you not familiar, is a point in space and time where every other point of space and time is visible and re- reachable. Why is it in the basement of tattoo moms? They're always in the basement. I don't. It's just the nature of alifs. I don't. I don't make the rules. Uh, so when you're in an alif, you are everywhere, and you are also nowhere at the same time. And a small step can take you to the other side of the universe. Aleph's are, by their very nature, unpredictable, but here at the Voice of Free Planet X, we believe in better living through technology. So I got this little doohickey here, and this is something that focuses the Aleph down in the basement. So the infinite possibilities of time and space are now ours to control. So it's gonna allow us to bring individual intervals throughout time, throughout space, right here to you. No more intergalactic Skype calls. So provided that I've calibrated this correctly, everything should be... Hey, are you all right? What? No, I mean, yes. It's just me again, not doing anything out of the ordinary. Again. Right. This would be our first... Never mind. Don't worry, I'm Tiff, Tiff Talk. This is nothing unusual. So totally normal. Normal as a handful of kittens, as the saying goes. That's, that's not a saying. Really? Huh. Are you, are you okay? <laughs> yes. Uh, Take this car. Uh, what, what? It, just, it just says it's not over. I said read it later. But, but what's it supposed to mean? We, ha- we haven't even started the show yet. Listen, hold on to it. It's going to be very important that you read that. And, um, take this box. All right, so so the card and the box. The box is, the box is empty. Is there a point to all this? There will be. Are you sure you're all right? That that, that just looks like a nasty head wound. This? No, no, this is nothing really. Um, but thanks for reminding me. Is that a ray gun? Yeah. And you're just going to leave it here? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, that, that's, that's very Chekhov. No, the, the blaster, it's an XJ-9. They don't, they don't make them anymore. Chekhovs are like rifles. No, no, I mean Chekhov, he was this Russian writer who had this thing about guns and... Yeah, 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 whatever. Um, do you have a pen? Uh, a pen? Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I got a pen. Ooh, nice pen. Thanks. Uh, am I going to get that back? It's just, it is a nice pen, and I don't want to lose it. Uh, I'll give it back. Um, at least, I hope I will. Um, listen, I, uh, I have to go soon. You, you may not be here when I come back, so I just wanted to tell you, what you do, it's, um, it's good. It's, it's good to let people's voices be heard, you know? I, I don't know what I'm saying. I, I guess it's just... It's easy to forget how important a voice can be, especially if people don't want that voice heard. Well, thanks. I guess uh, always nice to meet a fan of the show. Yeah, sure. Um, big fan, which is why I have to go right now. 
Okay. Well, got a empty box here. As I was saying, um, thanks to the Aleph in the basement of Tattooed Mom, we are able to warp the laws of time and space and bring you the most spectacular of concepts in the known universe, spirited debate. I'm sure you all, like myself, are very concerned by the recent annexing of Earth to the purview of the pan-reality deator. None of us saw that coming. But as The Voice of Free Planet X is a show that prides itself on many, showing as many sides of the argument as possible, so I've brought, oh, hey, it's uh, you again. Again? Yeah, you, you were just here. Uh, what did you put behind those chairs? Um, sound equipment. Did you say I was just here? Yeah. Shit. Really? That's either a very good or a very bad sign. Well, uh, I see your head's better. What? You had a bandage on your head. I did, huh? Wild. Um, I'm gonna put these papers here. Ooh, an XJ9. They don't make them anymore. Is this yours? I thought it was yours. First time seeing it. Can I have my pen back? What? I don't have your pen. Do you work here? A tattoo dad? Nah. Mom. Uh, what? This place. It's called Tattoo Mom. It is? Shit. For real? This may not have been a good idea. What, the debate? No, no. You go do your show. I gotta check on something. I, I'm gonna need this. Okay, so uh, back to our debate about the Pan-Reality Deator's occupation of Earth. We have here a member of the Pan-Reality Deator's Planetary Security Advisory Staff, Salamander Keep. Hello, hello. Very happy to be here. Ah, ah. I was looking for yeah, a woman just brought them in. Imagine that. And here she is now, again. Did you hurt your head again? Not again, same wound. Keep, give me your piece. What? I know you're packing, give it to me. Fine. Here, be careful, it's an XJ9. They don't make them anymore. You'll get it back. Like my pen? have your pen. What? You brought a gun to my show. I have enemies. And a permit. After all, an unarmed debater loses before he opens his mouth as the saying goes. That, that's not a saying. No? Well, anyway, I don't have a gun anymore, so I don't see why you're getting all huffy. Fine, fine, fine. Uh, we also have the author of That Serpent's Eye, a memoir of life in the Deator's shadow, Dr. Loam Sodden. <laughs> Dr. Sodden, uh, thank you for being here. Meep Morp. Thank you for having me. I'm a bit astounded to be here. I was under the impression that my home planet was unreachable by order of the Deator. Yeah, I may have broken some laws of time and space to get you here. Ah. I, too, am surprised that the infamous Professor Loam Sodden is here. Sodden is on anyone's list in anybody's catalog as one of the half-dozen top heroes of the organization that flatteringly calls themselves... The defiance. Ooh. This standing he achieved by adopting over the past two to three years a series of adamant positions rejecting at least the Deator's foreign policy and at most the Deator himself. In one of his essays, Mr. Sodden writes, and I quote, by accepting the presumption of legitimacy of debate on certain issues, such as this one, one has already lost 
Are you ready for this? One soul. I should like to begin by asking him why under the circumstances, if by being here he stands to lose his soul, he consented to be here in the first place. Well, because, uh, first of all, I didn't put it quite in those terms, I don't think. I, uh, I think that uh, by... uh, uh, it's, it's in the book. <laughs> yes, but I said that there are certain issues, for example, genocide, such that by consenting to discuss them, one degrades <gasps> oneself and to some degree loses one's soul. And I think that's true. And nevertheless, I can easily imagine circumstances in which I would have been glad to debate genocide. For example, if there was some chance that by debating genocide it might have been possible to eliminate it. And I think I feel the same way about the Deator coming in and forcibly ruling entire planets. Uh, and I really think that there is fundamentally no argument anymore at an intellectual level, uh, in, in my opinion. Um, but I think it important to discuss, nevertheless. Now, hold, hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. At what level is there an argument? I'm sorry? At what point? Was there an intellectual argument? At which point did an intellectual argument in favor of the DA tour coming in and forcibly ruling entire planets, as you say, exist? Oh, well, that's not what I said. I think, I think if I, that's exactly what you said. Well, uh, as I say in the book, I think that there may have been a time when there was something to debate, before we fully understood what the Deator was capable of, for example, before, we, before so many worlds had already fallen, my world among them. I think it was a debatable issue in a sense in which it no longer is a debatable issue. Oh, really? Oh, why is that? Because at the moment, I think it's really an issue of the survival of the existence of these planets as their own entities, as social and cultural entities. I think that's what's at stake. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, okay. But even that could be intellectually argued, couldn't it? Well, in the same sense as, um, Jared, what's an atrocity here on Earth? Oh, there's the Holocaust. <gasps> oh, you only had the one? Huh. Sadly, uh, no. But that one does tend to overshadow the others. Allegedly. Uh, I'm sorry? I think what Mr. Keep is referring to is a segment of the population that believes the Holocaust did not happen. Oh, oh, were there no survivors? Uh, there were survivors. Well, then how can anyone so, doubt? Uh, much of history is conjecture. But people's lives. Can we get to the topic at hand? Uh, of course, of course. Anything can be intellectually argued. I imagine there were people who argued in favor of the Holocaust? Still are. <laughs> Madness. Yeah, but we aren't talking about something that happened in Earth's ancient past. Uh, not that long ago. Um, 72 years. <laughs> is that so? People tend to forget. In any case, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the stability that the pan-reality Deator brings to a planet. How the Deator helps the world under its wing. Why he brings the universe with him. Is, is that the Deator bringing the universe with him right now? Uh, no, it looks like just some tots. Oh, okay. But whether it is or it isn't, is that so bad? Bringing the universe to you? I thought you were all about diversity, uh, cultural exchange. Would being a part of a larger whole be better for society? If what's at stake is a planet, society, and culture, mightn't there be two points of view about how to help it evolve, am I right? Oh, there are many different points of view. You and I have had this discussion many, many times before, and I've seen you take several different points of view. Uh, that true. used to bother me. It used to infuriate me, in fact, because it showed how little you cared about what you're talking about. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you're being flippant, but you don't care. It doesn't affect you. It doesn't touch you. You haven't felt the Deator dig his claws into all that you hold dear, your home, your culture, your rights, and rip it all away for his own purposes. Perhaps that's because there is nothing you hold dear. Perhaps you're the better off of the two of us because of it. There are many different points of view, but I can only see one. I've had one point of view forced upon me by circumstance, by a tyrant, and because of that, my vision is limited. 
the deator creates ruin. Whether that is his function or merely a byproduct, that is something for someone else, someone who has not been touched by him, to debate. That's not a question I am interested in. More importantly, I think that there are very legitimate issues to be argued as to how the deator ought to put an end to his destructive actions on the various planets he has claimed. Yes. But one way, of course, to put an end to the Deator's necessary intervention is to conclude war against any defiance successfully. That's a way. You can't blame the Deator's actions on the defiance. Oh, he was doing this long before anyone rose up against him. The most likely outcome of the Deator's arrival is the utter destruction of a planet, stripping it of its resources and leaving its people to die. Oh, you think that, do you? Yes. That is what has happened in the past. That is what has happened to my home world. And what's past is prologue. Prologue. Prologues are often written after the main manuscript has been completed, you know. Did Did you know that? I don't think so. History is biased towards those marking it down. Listen, it's not only I, but people with whom I disagree refer to your theological certitudes and your liberal application of them to every subject upon which you touch. So the subject of, are you ready for this? Your own intolerance of other people's points of view. I think that is quite interesting. I really don't believe it's fair to say that I'm not willing to tolerate other positions. Uh, you said you only had one point of view. You guys remember that, right? You say in your book that war is simply an obscenity, a depraved act by weak and miserable people. Well, yes, it is. But I include all of us in that, including myself. Sure, 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 sure. Sure, 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 because you count everybody in the company of the guilty. I think that's true in the case of war okay. and violence. Okay, well, this, in a sense, is a theological observation, isn't it? No, I don't think so. Because if somebody points out if everybody is guilty of everything, then nobody is guilty of anything. Well, no, that's not what I'm saying. If we're all guilty, then we're all complicit. Don't you see? This is why the DA tour won. You wanted him there. Your lot, okay, is always the first to cry that your rights are being taken away. That authoritarian rulers are somehow antithetical to the way of life. But in your heart, In your soul, if you will, you want somebody else in charge to call the shots. The security that comes from knowing you're being looked after. But that's just the thing. We are not being looked after. My world is turning to a shriveled husk. And my people, my people are are divided. Okay, 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 okay. The right people are being looked after, okay? To ask for everybody to be taken care of. (laughs) <laughs> That's fantasy. The Deator gives people what they need, not necessarily what they want. History bears this out. Who is history? We don't live in an ideal universe, okay? So we don't have the luxury of ideal scenarios. Let me put it this way. Uh, you're staffing a colony a colony ship to a new world, all right? Who do you choose? Resources are limited. Resources are always limited. Who do you choose? Obviously, it's a dangerous trip, so you need the healthiest people possible. So, you know, you don't include people with mental deficiencies, physical disabilities, anyone who needs a pill to function properly. The whole point of this is to start a new society on a new world. So, procreation becomes paramount, right? Come on, try to follow me here. Come. Come on. Anyone over a certain age can't come. Homosexuals aren't going to make any children. Come on, am I wrong? So no need to include them either. And if past is indeed prologue, as you say, 
then we need to take a good hard look at family heritage. Who has a history of violence or poverty or substance abuse in their family? My God, you don't want those types in your colony, do you? Do you? Only the best people. Those who have <clears throat> prospered in the past can be counted on to <sighs> prosper in the future is my math so wrong. It's monstrous. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Oh, please. You're not even a lawyer and certainly not mine. Excuse me? Who are you? Ms. Axelrod, an introduction, if you please. This is uh, Lucifer, who is the morning star. He works with my wife. But if he's here, who's running hell? Uh, that would be my wife. Oh, and she's doing a hell of a job of it. Um, uh, Ms. Axelrod, I, uh, I don't see what... He has to offer this debate. Speak of the devil, and he shall appear, but I'm not really here for the debate. I have um, concerns, and I was wondering if curious Georgina here shares them. Concerns? Nothing here seems uh, <coughs> off to you? Well, I mean, if you're going to be here, you could be a little closer to the microphone. That's a little off, but... Oh. Um, Beyond that... Like nothing else? And, uh, I mean, how do you mean? Well, you're a woman. Yes. You didn't used to be. Huh. You sure? Quite. Feels right, though. Be that as it may, uh, there's other changes that I find troubling. What's the name of this month? Uh, July. No, no, it's Swarch. I'm pretty it's, sure it's not. It's not Swarch. Well, this is still Penn's town, I take it? No, this is Philadelphia. What? Philadelphia. It's very troubling, very troubling. I honestly don't see what the problem is. You don't see. You don't see. A major alternate timeline is occurring, and you're sitting here among the tater tots, a tattooed dad. Mom. What? Th this place, it's, it's called Tattooed Mom. Well, now you're just messing with me. No, no, it's true. I, I can show you a menu. I don't need to see a menu. I need you to understand what is at stake. Someone is messing with the timeline for their own ends. It could lead to the destruction of your entire world. Aw, Lucifer. I didn't know you cared. Quite honestly, I don't. But as a metaphysical presence, I understand that my existence is dependent on belief. No believers, and all that I am will dissipate. Now, as the embodiment of evil, I'm sure I'll pop up in another culture's psychosis at some point, but I won't be this. I won't be me. I won't be Lucifer, who is the morning star, first of the fallen, the peacock angel, lord of lies, mass. We get it. I'm not sure that you do. I like being me. I like this voice. I like this suit. And I'm not about to toss it all away because you couldn't leave an Aleph well enough alone. Oh, oh, so this is my fault. Oh, don't flatter yourself. You're clearly a cog in someone else's machine. What I don't like is how you're spinning so comfortably. Oh, okay, okay. But who benefits from changing the name of a city or, or the month of July? Swarch. No. These are side effects of time displacement. Ask not who benefits from these little things, but who is benefiting from reality in general. Why is everybody looking at me? Because they're not stupid. Oh, God, she's got a gun. Oh, that's an XJ9. You know, they don't make them anymore. I must say, this debate has gotten ever so much more interesting. It uh, has taken a bit of a turn. Hey, um, I know I keep asking, but do you have my pen? What? No. Salamander Keep has hired me to use the a -lift downstairs to mess with the time stream. I've done nothing of the sort. Well, no, not yet, but you will do it. Preposterous. Professor Sodden? On those papers are everything that you'll say during the debate. That's how Keep knows just what you to say. What? Why? You're creating alternate timelines to win at a debate? No. no. On a radio show? No, 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 no. 
That's just an added perk. You have to stop this. In a few minutes, you're going to hand me those papers to send to the past and do the other things. Tell me to stop. We're changing too much. This can't be good for time. Well, far be it from me to argue with a gun to my head. I can't be here when my previous self arrives. You have to promise. Promise you won't do it. I promise! I don't want to damage the timeline any more than you do. Okay. I have to go. I'm going to be here very soon. So as I was saying... You can't honestly expect that we're go still going to debate now, do you? Uh... Well, seeing as how that's the last line written down here, I guess not. Well, I'm just glad that you're not going to give Tiff that paper, and we can stop messing with the timeline. Oh, hi, yes, Tiff, old girl. Good to see you. Be a dear and go back in time and give this to me. Thank you. Ta -da. What? To be discreet? Oh, there's no point in that now. Off with you. And you all had better let her leave. Unless you want to argue with my dear friend Chekhov here. <laughs> That's what a Chekhov ray gun looks like. It is more of a rifle. <laughs> I, I hope you like this and it's up to stuff. Tip. Uh, make sure you go get this, stash it back here, behind the chairs, will you? Go to Benny's on Flagster 9. He'll get you a good deal. Good luck. I'll reimburse you. Uh, Salamander, this is preposterous. You can't. Uh, uh, but he must. You are enjoying this way too much. I just find it so amusing when people don't think fourth dimensionally. That's something that will dawn on our dear Tempest Fugitive Tiff in five, four... Three, two... Before you ask, no, I don't have your pen. Why has nothing changed? Because it can't be. Ah, now you're thinking non-linearly. If I may play my own advocate for a moment, imagine what would happen if our Mr. Keep did as you originally asked. He doesn't send you back, which means he doesn't change anything. Which means you have no reason to tell him not to change anything. Which means he changes things. Paradox. Finally! Your brain is working, Loam. Only took a cataclysmic altering of time and space. You've broken the time stream! I am correcting the time stream. I am saving the time stream. That is somewhat true. He really is doing a noble act of self-centeredness. Altering the timeline further would only lead to reality-destroying paradox, closing the wound after the organs have leaked out. I believe the saying goes... That's, uh, not a saying. Are you certain? Why are you doing this? Risking everything, the fabric of reality itself. For what? Isn't it obvious? Winning! <laughs> but this isn't a game. Say that again. This isn't a game. That's where you're wrong. That's where all your type is wrong. It's a game as long as you're the winner. So always be the winner. This guy gets what I'm talking about. <laughs> Better to win in hell than to lose in heaven is... The saying goes. Okay, that is, that might be, I don't think that's a saying. Are you sure? This is insane. You are insane. Am I? Yes, absolutely. Am I insane? You're absolutely You're insane, insane. To stand on that, that's, that's absolutely crazy. I'm still winning. And you've outlived your usefulness. Sorry, Tiff. You know Benny on Fledgester 9? He'll remove the firing pin of enemy's weapons for a small fee. Don't worry about the reimbursement. This one, it's on me. What are they doing? Oh, it looks like Salamander Keep has tiff talked by the throat. 
Wait, no, no, Tiff has broken free. And now she's pummeling his face into the floor. Tiff's gotten out a ray gun. Oh, Keith has knocked it away. Now they're scrambling on the floor. I, I don't need a play-by-play. You did ask. Looks like Keith's got the gun. Pew, pew, pew. Loser. Out of the way, I'm a doctor. 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 Doctor for losers, maybe. She's not gonna last long. Not with that head wound that I gave her. I win again. Winning. I never get tired of it. Well, this uh, sure is a mess, isn't it? Why do you ask questions you already know the answer to? I'm a reporter. It's what we do. Well, then report on this, reporter. I win. The Dator wins. And everything you did and the Defiance did to try to stop him doesn't matter because I changed it. I changed it all. Now the right people are in charge. The DA tour is in charge. I'm in charge. Winning. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I can't. It's not over. What's that? I get it now. The card. The card from earlier. It's not over. Well, don't look at me. I don't have any unearthly idea what she's talking about. It's not over. It is. He's won, all right. Thanks to that blasted Aleph, he's won. It's not over. Stop saying that! It's not over. It is. It's over. He's won. And what have you won, Keep? Oh, this is you being a reporter again. Yes, yes it is. Well, um, well, there's... Studio audience, let's show him what he's won. What's... What's in the box? Open it. Go on. There's nothing here. Ming, 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 nothing. That's what you won, because it isn't over. Oh, I get it now. Funny. You've rewritten history. So what? People do that all the time. But you know what? It never takes. Look at Lom over there. Uh, no, pl please don't. The Deator has smashed his people to dust, and he's still here. We're all still here. You know why? Because it doesn't end. The fight isn't over because you win an argument. It's not, it's not over because if you win an election. It's not over if you win a war. It's not over when you use time travel to install an intergalactic dictator as if he was always there. Oh, you want it to be over. I get that. You want it to be the final say, to take the voice away from those you're tired of hearing about. But that's not how things work. It is the consequence of bringing the universe with you. You can't pick and choose which parts of the universe you listen to. And you can't close your eyes and wish I've saw the way. This is a game to you. Fine, I get that. But you only win when the games are over. And it's not over. It's never over. I have a gun. And what has it gotten you? This is another one of those reporter questions, right? Yeah. But I won! You did say you'd rather win in hell, didn't you? Consider this emptiness you're feeling right now, this ache from deep within about your inconceivably trivial existence and how you've wasted it utterly. Consider it a taste of what's in store, because here's the thing about winning in hell from someone who knows. No one actually wants to win in hell. Uh, excuse me, is, yeah. is this supposed to be doing that? No. You're not sure? It's, it's not my device. Just worry. Um, is, is that not good? 
not good. We've overloaded the Ouroboros compensator. Ooh, Paradox will do that. I can reach far enough in here. I can keep the manually, I can manually keep the Ouroboros compensator from falling apart, but it's, but it's, it's got its own problem. I mean, that's expanding the ALIF. I mean, it's gonna keep going at this rate. It's gonna engulf uh, everything, like time and space is, I have no meaning. Everything will exist at the same space time as everything else. This is the end of everything. Oh, God! Salamander. I. I didn't think! <laughs> no, you didn't. All right, so you've got your hand in there. Um, but that, that seems like a temporary solution at best. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it'll probably kill me. Um, it's, it's fine. Uh, who knows how long I'll last with this head wound. Um, I'll, I'll give it a shot. No! No, you can't! You don't have my pen! What? What is it with this pen? You, you don't understand, all right? You are going to go back in time and borrow my pen. You have to do that. It's already happened to me. You still have to be able to do that. You have to set up everything. Bring the box. Make sure the XJ9 is on the table. Give me the card that says it's not over. Borrow my pen. You still have to do all that. Otherwise, paradox. You, you can't die here. Um, listen, I'll do it. It's not your time. Uh, well, maybe not, but it is my place. <laughs> it's my show, after all. Um, here, I'll hold on to this. Everyone else, go back into the ALIF. Uh, I should be able to get you all to your proper time and place. Are you sure about this? Like it matters. Let's get out of here. Oh, brother. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> what is this? Some sort of noble self-sacrifice? <laughs> Honestly, I, uh, I really just didn't know what else to do. I could help you out, you know. Uh, set things right. Put the timeline back in its proper joint. I, I don't care about proper timelines. I just don't want this Aleph to destroy everything. The bargain is struck. I'll collect my fee sometime in the future. Toodles. Okay. You're still here. Yeah, uh, by the grace of Lucifer. That doesn't sound great. I'll manage it. Here's your pen back. So what happens now? Well, I don't know if you noticed, but we start a little late, and I've just been a bit of a mess. And if I had planned things better, We'd have some sort of musical denouement. Oh. Well, what's the point of time travel if you can't use it to be Santa Claus every once in a while, as the saying goes? That's not a... You know what? Never mind. Continue. <laughs> Assembled listeners, please welcome Gina Martinelli. Thanks for being here, Gina. Hey. Uh, this couldn't have come at a better time. I was just about to get arrested for uh, singing protest songs in Blinton House Oval. Oh, nice. So happy Smart to everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Smart. Yeah. Smart weather, am I right? Okay. Oh, oh. There's, sorry. Technical difficulty? Uh, unbeknownst okay. to you all, I have been very fortunate in that Gina has been writing many songs uh, based on the Voice of Free Planet X episodes. Uh, you haven't heard them, but I have, and they're wonderful. <laughs> and she's going to do one now. Okay. Every now and then there's a renaissance A rebirth of good ideas A new dawn A rebirth only comes When something older dies 
It's the cycle of society through millennia, through thousands of tries. Ooh, ooh. Time and again, call the devil a friend. Everything is relative, as it turns out. To straighten things up, we walk the crooked path in the end. Getting back to the start is what it's all about. We remember all our fears. Light that's shining bright illuminates the things hiding in the dark. We cry for change, return to the good old days when the difference between what is true and what we love isn't quite so stark. We pray for security. Uncertainty. We are made of such predictable circuitry. Mm, our wires get crossed and uncrossed again habitually. Making that red light at the end turn red But we can be our own resistor We can impede the flow of that current instead And we can resist, resist we can exist on the world goes beyond and above Oh, resist, resist We can exist with an increased capacitance for love Oh, resist, resist Please insist on the world that goes beyond and above Resist, resist we can exist with an increase capacitance for love, capacitance for love. Gina Martinelli, everybody. That's the show. I want to thank a few people. Number one, Jake Beckman, who built this time space contraption it's amazing and wonderful and i love it sarah gates who did the amazing alien makeup you saw on loman keep and of course the philadelphia podcast festival would not exist without its sponsors the philadelphia podcasting society bridge that sound is doing the mic tattooed moms of course Fireball Printing, Pyroglyphic Studio, New Media Touring, Philly Banner Express, Tea House Incorporated, Wildfire Radio, Click Save Photography Design, and that's everybody. <laughs> and thanks, of course, to the... This episode could not have existed without the actors. Come on out here. That's right. This couldn't have existed without the voices of... Phil Thomas. Lizzie Hinman Harvey. Andy Hunter. Russell Collins. You can find more out about the Voice of Free Planet X at 
planetx.libson.com. And that's our show. Thank you all for coming. Stick around. The Philadelphia Podcast Festival has just started. There is so much more in store. And it's Jared's birthday! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jared. Happy birthday to And many more. Y'all are precious.